Revelation chapter 17 talks about a sinister end time power called Babylon the Great. Babylon is portrayed as a harlot arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with precious jewels, who is drunk with the blood of the saints and she sits on a scarlet colored beast. This is a major end time persecuting power which actually exists in the world today. That's what I'm going to be talking about in this video as I share a clip with you from a previous video of mine entitled 10 Facts About Babylon the Great. But before I do that, make sure to subscribe to my channel and click the bell so you don't miss any future uploads. Now for the clip. Fact number 5. Babylon persecutes Christians. Revelation chapter 17 verse 6 says, I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. Have you figured out who Babylon the Great is yet? If you think you know who Babylon is, let me know in the comments section down below. Now, I'm going to identify who Babylon the Great is in just a minute, but just to recap so far, Babylon the Great represents a corrupt church who united with the state throughout its existence, persecuted Christians, and is rich. Just by those details alone, I think it's pretty easy to narrow it down and discover who Babylon the Great symbolizes, and that is the Roman Catholic Church. Now, in identifying the Roman Catholic Church as Babylon the Great, please don't think I'm saying that all Catholics are bad people. All Catholics are not bad people, but they are in a corrupt system of religion. It's the religious institution of the Roman Catholic Church that is bad, not the people. There are sincere, godly Christians in the Roman Catholic Church and many other Christian denominations around the world. I was once a Catholic myself, and if you would like to learn why I left the Roman Catholic Church, you can click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen to watch my video entitled 10 Reasons Why I Left the Catholic Church. In terms of the Roman Catholic Church becoming corrupt, corresponding to Babylon being a harlot, the Catholic Church actually started out as a good church. The Roman Catholic Church started out as the Church of Rome, and it's written about in the New Testament. The Book of Romans is addressed to the Church of Rome. However, the Church of Rome later developed into what we now know as the Roman Catholic Church, and it became corrupt in the process, because it adopted many pagan concepts and incorporated them into Christianity. That's why Catholics pray to Mary, the saints, and the cross. That comes from pagan idol worship. There's no example of Christians in the Bible praying to statues, pictures, or crosses. The second commandment tells us not to do that. Exodus chapter 20 verses 4 through 5 says, You shall not make for yourselves a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them, nor serve them. The Roman Catholic Church has also changed the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday. They admit this in their own writings. For example, the Catechism of the Council of Trent states, The Church of God has thought it well to transfer the celebration and observance of the Sabbath to Sunday. The Fourth Commandment tells us to keep the seventh day holy as the Sabbath, which corresponds to Saturday. Exodus chapter 20 verses 8 through 10 tells us, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work. The pagans in the Roman Empire worshipped the sun god on Sunday, so the Catholic Church changed the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday to accommodate them. This was done during the reign of Constantine the Great because Constantine thought that by uniting Christians and pagans, by making some compromises between them, he can strengthen his empire. However, the Roman Empire ended up falling anyway, and the Church of Rome became corrupted by paganism. The Roman Catholic Church today is really nothing more than a compromise between paganism and Christianity. There are a lot of teachings and practices in the Catholic Church that have pagan origins but have been given Christian names to make them appear Christian. In terms of the Roman Catholic Church being a church-state union and persecuting Christians, 
corresponding to the woman riding the beast and being drunk with the blood of the saints. For over a thousand years, the Catholic Church united with European countries to persecute people who would not submit to the Church's authority. Many Christian groups with opposing views to the Catholic Church who did not accept the authority of the Pope were viciously persecuted by the Church. This was done through Crusades, Holy Wars, and the Inquisition. One group of Christians the Catholic Church persecuted was the Waldensians, a 2015 online post entitled, Pope Asks Pardon from Waldensian Protestants for Past Persecution by Reuters.com states, Pope Francis asked forgiveness on Monday for the Roman Catholic Church's non-Christian and inhumane treatment in the past of the Waldensians, a tiny Protestant movement the Vatican tried to exterminate in the 15th century. The movement, an early precursor of the Protestant Reformation in the 16th century, was branded as heretical and in 1487, Pope Innocent VIII ordered its extermination. Some 1,700 Waldensians were killed in 1655 by Catholic forces commanded by the Duke of Savoy. Huguenots were another group of Christians that were persecuted by the Catholic Church. At the command of Catholic King Charles IX, a massacre of the Huguenots began in Paris, France on August the 24th in 1572, which was the eve of the Feast of Bartholomew the Apostle. The massacre lasted several weeks and extended outward to other urban centers and the countryside. Estimates of how many Huguenots were murdered go as high as 70,000. And that's just the tip of the iceberg, John Dowling wrote in his book History of Romanism. From the birth of popery to the present time, it is estimated by careful and credible historians that more than 50 millions of the human family have been slaughtered for the crime of heresy by popish persecutors, an average of more than 40,000 religious murders for every year of the existence of popery to the present day. In addition, just like Babylon the Great is rich because she's adorned with all kinds of jewels, the Roman Catholic Church is the richest church in the world. An online post entitled The 10 Richest Religions in the World by churchandstate.org.uk states, Catholic priests are expected to make a vow of poverty, so it is ironic that the church is actually the richest religion in the world. The Catholic Church owns some of the greatest artworks ever made. It also has vast gold deposits and billions of dollars in assets. It also earns a significant amount of income from the tourism sector as the Vatican is considered an independent city-state. It also has more than a billion members around the world. So much for not storing up your treasures on earth. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6 verses 19 through 20, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. All those works of art, gold, and precious treasures that the Catholic Church is storing up is going to be no good when Jesus returns. Then the Church is going to have to give an account of how it made use of its means to advance the Gospel. Check out my Christian t-shirt store by clicking on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen or the link in the video description. Some of the shirts that you can find in my store include my No Jesus No Peace shirt, my Bible acronym shirt, and my Sabbath Keeper shirt. These shirts can be a good conversation starter to help you share your faith and proceeds from your purchase help keep my channel going. Not to mention I'm having a limited time sale, so if you order from now until Sunday, you will get a 10% discount on your entire purchase if you use the promo code BFB10 at checkout. The symbolic description of Babylon the Great perfectly fits the Roman Catholic Church. The Roman Catholic Church was a church-state union which persecuted Bible-believing Christians for over a thousand years, and it's also the richest church in the world. Furthermore, Bible prophecy indicates that there will be a revival of this power in the end times. In other words, church and state will unite again, and that will result in persecution against true Christians. 
Learn more by clicking on the screen and watching my video entitled 10 Facts About Babylon the Great. Please like and share this video to help spread God's word. Thank you for watching and God bless you.